Greetings, everybody. Hope everyone's having a great day. I'm very excited for today's cooking with Frag. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ashley. Time for the cooking. Um, I'm gonna do roasted veggies today. It's very simple to do. Um, I just wanted to roast some vegetables. I think a lot of people overlook roasting, especially if you're just starting to cook for yourself. If you're trying to make a composed meal of starch, vegetable, and protein, uh, time management it can be very hard. And roasting vegetables is very easy. It's extremely easy to do. The worst that happens is you overcook it. And even if you overcook roasted vegetables, they're still going to have a ton of flavor because they have that nice char on them from the oven. So we have our oven preheated to 375 or getting there. Uh, what we got today is got these lovely chanterelle mushrooms. We're going to roast those separately. Uh, yellow onion, broccoli, broccoli rob, which is like baby broccoli. It's very tender and delicious. And some carrots. There's my oven. So I think the key to roasting vegetables is to make sure the shapes of what you're cutting are uniform. Obviously, broccoli is going to have a slightly different cooking time than a carrot, and so on and so forth. So the shape that you cut things in is very important for uniform cooking. Um, I'll go over a few tricks to get a nice roast on your vegetables or whatever you're cooking um, when we get to that time. We're going to start with the mushrooms. I want to roast these separately because uh, you know how much I love my nicely cooked mushrooms. So I want to make sure those are done properly. Um, for our seasoning mix, all I have is salt, cracked black pepper, and a little bit of coriander. Uh, coriander has a nice roasted flavor by itself. I like it on roasted veggies, especially. I will say a little bit goes a long way. There's probably only half a teaspoon, if that, in the entire in the entire mix. Grab my knife. All right. So for these chanterelles. Fine with the stem being in there, but want to get some nice bigger chunks. Uh, chanterelles and several other mushrooms come in these big pieces. Uh, the very end of the stem is going to be very woody, so we're going to get rid of that and then kind of cut them into just larger chunks. Mushrooms, of course, shrink down when they roast or any way that you cook them. The trick to getting a nice even roast on pretty much anything is having a even coating of oil. Um, if you're cooking something that takes a shorter time and you still want it to be browned, that's kind of icky. It's like a little cup to catch all the dirt. For this one occasion, I'm going to rinse this one off. Add like a pine needle in there. Normally don't wash my mushrooms. That one was especially dirty. So I can almost guarantee this mushroom is going to have a much harder time browning than the others. That's because it got water on it, and which will then absorb. Alrighty. Alright, so we have these pretty big pieces of mushroom. So all we're going to do is douse these in oil and salt and add a little bit of garlic as well and they'll be done. The garlic itself probably won't end up getting eaten but while they're roasting it'll make a nice uh, nice flavor for the oil which will then infuse into the mushrooms. Been really in love with elephant garlic lately. It's very easy to uh, very easy to use. Um, if I was going to do this with just regular garlic I would just throw whole cloves into the mix. These are chanterelle mushrooms. I had them at the farmer's market at a good price. They're usually pretty expensive, but uh, farmer markets are great for that kind of stuff. Okay. So, just going to do some larger chunks here. Let's make it into kind of cubes. We'll use some of that for the roasted veggies as well. All right. A little bit of canola oil. 
Usually use canola for roasting. Uh, it has a higher burning temperature. It's very hard to roast with olive oil. You can do it, but uh, if you have your oven too hot or leave it too long, you end up having kind of a burnt flavor, which is never good. I like to put things in a bowl when I roast them to make sure you get that nice even coating of oil. Um, you can see this in the kitchen, but what a lot of people do is they put it on the pan and then try to oil it from there, and you never quite get a good even uh, coating of the oil when you do that. Alright, so they're all really gently tossing the oil. What I'm going to do now that it's mixed up is take a little piece raw and taste it, see what my salt level's at. A little more salt, not much. This also helps the seasoning get evenly throughout them. Alrighty. Those are ready to go. Try to spread them out as evenly as possible so you get as much surface area, um, not only on the bottom of the pan, but the top as well. Lovely. All right, so it's going to go in the same time as the veggies, so I'm just going to put them to the side for now. All right. So again, the main thing when you roast vegetables is to have nice uniform pieces. So we have to figure out, it takes a little bit of practice, but what size carrot is going to cook the same as a piece of broccoli? I'm going to take this woody end off. Uh, here's a tip for broccoli. When you cut broccoli, to avoid any of the green stuff spreading all over your cutting board, make a cut in and then twist your knife. If you do that, it just pops apart with very little of the greens themselves falling off. If you chop through the broccoli, it spreads green stuff everywhere. So we're going to go for nice pieces like about that big. And then we'll cut our carrots accordingly and hope that they come out at about the same time. that one in half. All right. I really love vegetables a lot. I don't think people eat enough vegetables. I love vegetables as just a snack. Um, <laughs> makes you feel better than eating a bagel or toast or pop tart or whatever it is. I like to have vegetables around and cooked in the house. Just as, ha as something to eat. You get a lot of energy from vegetables and they make you feel decent um, when you eat them. All right, now this broccoli rob. Don't have to do much to this at all. We're going to leave it mostly whole, just take off the woody stem end, and then we'll roast it leaves and all. So, see they just kind of look like, look like that, but they're nice and delicious, really tender and tasty. And now for the carrots. The carrots are probably the most dense thing that we're cooking right now. So, to figure out how big we want to cut them. Sometimes I won't even peel the carrots when you roast them, but usually a little better texturally if you do peel them. So once again, this is a good thing to do if you're trying to cook a composed meal and you're not the most experienced cook, because all you have to do is throw it in the oven and forget it. Whereas if you're sautéing it or something, you probably have to constantly sit there and stir it. With this, the worst that happens is the vegetables get a little bit mushy, but they're still going to be very flavorful because they're going to have that nice roast on them. And you can really roast just about anything. There's very little limits to what you can roast. One of my favorite vegetables is roasted beets. Uh, warm roasted beets is, I'll just go ahead and say, my favorite vegetable to eat. Ah, coffee's good, too. All right. So... Got 
this. So let's pull out a couple pieces and see what we think. So those are probably about the same. So for the carrot, probably even probably shooting for about the thickness of the base of the broccoli. That should be should be similar enough. So I'm gonna cut this one in half, and we'll just cut it into triangles. See here, that should be just about good. And this one, we'll roll it back and forth and make some circle triangles. All you have to do to make that shape is just keep your knife at a bevel and then just roll the carrot back and forth while you cut it. This one's a little thicker, so we'll do the same, cut it into triangles. It's all about judging. Oh, it's all about judging how thick the food you're food you're making is. I mean, the worst that happens is you get a slightly undercooked piece of something. It's not the end of the world. And this one's super thick, so we're definitely gonna cut that in half. Alrighty. We got this white onion. For the white onion, I guess it's yellow onion. Gonna leave it uh, mostly whole. So we're not gonna break it up into lots of little pieces. Wanna have big chunks of onion in there. If you break apart the onion fully, it's gonna cook very quickly and the onion will end up being mushy before the rest of the veggies are done. So to avoid that, we'll leave it partly together and cut it into the chunk sizes that we want. So, go like this. But we'll be roasting a bunch of that. Try to not to toss it too heavily or they'll all fall apart, but it's not a big deal if a couple of them fall apart. You just want to have some bigger chunks in there like that, which will hopefully brown and then blacken. Alrighty. Myself a quick cleanup here, then we'll chop the garlic and herbs, and then we'll be roasting. And I'll talk to you guys while it roasts about some of the different stuff that you can do. Once again, after this season of Cooking with Frag, we're moving to season four, which is going to be culinary adventures, where I'm going to learn how to cook things um, that I don't know how to cook on stream and share my experience with you. Uh, I'm really excited for that. I'm also excited for this season, finishing off the things that uh, I know how to cook. I certainly have more stuff I could show you guys, but I think it's uh, about time I started learning some new things as well. So for that reason, I'm really excited. Yeah, nice big chunkies. Roasted garlic really loses um, a lot of its potency as far as that raw flavor goes. So having bigger chunks in there is not going to taste bad at all, especially if you are a garlic lover. Okay, next step is to add some herbs. This lovely thyme. Can use about, let's see, four or five stems at a time. All you have to do to peel thyme is just run your fingers across and pull off the leaves. You just want to avoid any big pieces of large stem. Uh, that will never cook down, it'll always be woody. So as simple as pinching it and just dragging your fingers across. Also makes your fingers smell amazing. Alright, we got a nice pile of thyme there. That should be more than enough. I like to go heavy on herbs when I roast vegetables, personally. That's just me. We got this nice oregano as well. Oregano, we're going to pull the other way and get uh, the leaves off the stems. Kind of pick it apart. The only thing you need to avoid is the very bottom woody end. That's not going to taste good if you bite into it. So it's real simple. We just, all we have in there is the vegetables. We're going to do thyme and oregano, oil, 
and then our mix of salt, black pepper, and coriander. Nice thing about roasted vegetables as well as uh, as our rubs, which I will be doing in a later one, is you can really you really have the freedom to um, do what you want with it. You can try any variety of spice rubs, so on and so forth. It's gonna taste it's gonna taste all right. Bunch of herbs. Give my hands a quick rinse and clean up my cutting board, and we'll be good to go. All right, so we got quite a bit of vegetables in there. This is probably good for <laughs> this is probably good for about three days for me. Salt, pepper, coriander, oil, herbs. And we'll start a roasting, and I'll chat to you guys while we're. Uh, Watching it roast. I don't think I've actually cooked much in the oven except for the duck breast for cooking with frag yet. So we probably use just about a tablespoon. Once you just want to get a nice light even coating on all the vegetables. You don't want to drown them in oil, but you need to make sure that they're all coated at least partially. So I want to make sure the salt mix and the herbs and everything gets evenly distributed throughout your mix. Definitely got enough oil. Do we have enough salt? We do. Actually, I'm going to go touch more. Just a touch. Always taste it while it's raw to check your salt level. I do the exact same thing with potatoes before I roast them, which just seems weird eating a raw potato. That's always your best judge um, if your salt level is right. Especially on roasting vegetables, um, it's always better to have the salt level correct before they roast rather than trying to salt it afterwards. The even saltiness of roasted vegetables is one of the great things about them. And we'll just pour this out onto our sheet pan. So again, trying to get it as even, even as possible over the pan itself. You can do lots of stuff with roasted or even grilled vegetables. You can roast them and cool them and make a vinaigrette and make a roasted vegetable salad. You can just use them as a straight side. Eat them hot. That's what I like to do. I personally love the onion and garlic smell, so I never remove the, never remove it from my hands. But that's just me. All right. And now we wait. The nice thing about roasting vegetables, if you're trying to do something else, you can put those in the oven, then you can start whatever other project you want to. You don't even have to worry about it. We're gonna probably say about 15 minutes or so. Since it's my only project. I'm not going to set a timer, but you can set it and forget it and come back to it later, and it'll be nice and perfect. Uh, I don't think there will be a Baking with Frag episode because I don't like to bake, though Culinary Adventures might change that if there is something I do want to bake. Um, I don't really consider myself a baker. I know how to bake, but I don't particularly enjoy it, so... The first pan was Chantel Mushrooms. Like Q, thank you very much, sir. A little hand to you. 
Yeah, the the grilling segment would have to happen in the dead of the summer, uh, Cosby. So probably not. So I will be going over marinades and spice rubs in two episodes this season. You can see all the information for Cooking with Rags Season 3 right here. As well as every single episode of Cooking with Rags goes up on YouTube afterwards. What's your favorite thing to eat with roasted vegetables? Like a nice steak is really, really it. Uh, roasted vegetables have this amazing rich flavor. It's absolutely rich. Move this stuff out of the way. Sides are really important, though. A side can actually really make a meal if you pair something correctly. Uh, often sides are overlooked for the protein and whatnot, but sometimes the sides really what makes your, your main dish shine. I think I got this shirt for Christmas last year, so I have no idea where it came from. All right, let's finish cleaning up. Cleaning as you go is one of the harder habits to get into while you cook, but man, it saves you time in the long run. See, one of the main habits I had to pick up when I started working in kitchens was constantly cleaning up after yourself, because if you don't, at the end of the day, you just end up with a huge mess. It only takes like 30 seconds to clean up your area or put dishes in a dish tub or something like that. If you neglect to do that every 10 minutes or so, it adds up quick. Yeah, I know. Jager wants me to do beef wellington too. Bad mash ruins a good steak, it's true. But thank you all for joining today. I'm really excited. We're, after the cast today, we're going to do, um, I'm going to do the one more night of Infinity Wars to finish off their beta event. I've been really enjoying the game. And then I believe the sub-choice poll is very close. I haven't looked at it uh, since it went out, but I keep hearing it's close. So we'll see what I'm playing tomorrow for sub-choice Sunday. And then next week, we're back into uh, normal format. Not that it wasn't normal before, but... Clark Uga, if I have more time, like when I'm on a five-day schedule, absolutely putting the list of ingredients on, on or posting it somewhere will definitely happen. Uh, the matter is I don't have enough planning time available to uh, do everything I want to. Yeah, I will come back to Infinity Wars later on, for sure, Scooby Fred. But uh, three days in a row is a lot for me on my channel, so... Um, Oh, no, Nostalgic Link. I just, um, my main kitchen towels are in the wash, so I'm using paper towels today. Not a germ concern at all. In fact, I'm very non-germ concerned. I'm obviously not going to cut raw chicken on something that I'm going to eat raw or the same cutting board, but uh, germs are very little concern for myself. How many types of onions are there? Lots. Red, yellow, white, sweet white, sweet yellow, walla walla, uh, pearl onions... I miss them. There's the ones that look like the little um, little squashes. Cipollini, there we go. Cipollini onions. Lots and lots and lots. Scallion is kind of a form of onion, yes. What's in the lead for the um, the sub choice right now? I'm going to turn the light on. We're not going to open the door. Don't turn up. I don't even use the light on this oven yet. There it is. Definitely getting there. Starting anyways. I'm going to turn my temp up to 400 because I can. Since we're standing here and watching. Let's do it. Escape goes to the lead. Okay, cool. How often do you cook meals for yourself? I probably cook, uh, I cook when I wake up, and then I usually cook when I get done with the stream as well. So, usually twice a day. 
And then I'll often make some larger stuff like this just to have available for snacks and whatnot. Cooking for yourself is one of the biggest ways to save money for yourself. If you're looking to save money, learning how to cook basic food is absolutely amazing. We can maybe make an oven cam happen. Let's see what happens here. I'll definitely have to move that once I go to open the door. Actually, not too bad, Tay-Tay. If you plan out ahead what you want to make, you don't have to go to the store all that often. On well, Nostalgic Link, I have stuff like this available for me to eat. Um, available for me to eat. It is not my kitchen. I would one day love to own a kitchen like this, but that probably comes with owning a much larger house than I'd ever want. Planning ahead also saves you time, which in turn saves you money. Well, I mean, I would if I could make the kitchen the biggest room in the house. I mean, I, th I need very little living space myself. I live with my parents for the duration of the challenge. And probably will live with them a year after this because you need two years of certified income to get any sort of loan whatsoever. And this will be the first year live streaming I've made uh, what would be considered legitimate income. I would never want a big house. Never want a big house. Too much upkeep. Just live in a kitchen. There you go. Well, you can reheat them in a pan. You can reheat them in the microwave. You can reheat them back in the oven if you want. So I'm, I'm probably going to end up taking suggestions for Season 4 at some point, kind of getting a feel for what you guys want to see me uh, see me cook. Yeah, about once a week is is what you should be doing for shopping, Basil. If you're on top of your stuff and you have like meal plans and whatnot, you could definitely get away with uh, once a week. One thing that's definitely helpful is having a list of staples that you need for your house so like stuff like your honey and peanut butter and cereal and all that stuff and having a checklist that you can go through and see what you need when you're planning to make your trip to the store so you know you have your core basics and then you plan your meals around uh, whatever else is happening oh, I'm starting to smell that garlic certainly smells good Mushrooms barely bubbling up there. Greens are starting to wilt a little bit. Yep, becoming organized is definitely a personal decision, Tay Tay. Uh, it's not easy, but you have to make systems and stuff like that. Start writing to-do lists for yourself, checklists, so on and so forth. It helps a lot. It does take a lot of um, effort when you first start doing it, but you'll find when you do become better organized, not greatly organized, even just slightly better organized, how much smoother things go. Garlic mashed potatoes I can definitely do, Cosby, but I know how to make that, so I don't really consider that a culinary adventure. That's awesome, Basil. It does help a lot, especially going to the store and compulsive shopping can add up really quick. Really quick. Boiled peanuts, huh? Maybe I'll do something I haven't made with garlic mash. Yeah, I know how to make carbonara and alfredo. Miso soup, I think, is definitely, um, definitely on, on the list. I love miso soup, and I'd love to learn how to cook it. That and egg drop as well. Yeah, you could definitely add red and green papers to the mix. Uh, one thing that's hard with roasting uh, peppers 
especially if they're cut up, is they're very, they have high moisture content, so they have a hard time um, browning. The worst that happens if you don't get a good browning, what you can do is turn your broiler on and then broil your veggies, veggies if they're fully cooked in the oven. What's up, size M? Yeah, I want to learn how to cook... Um, Cook new things. Yeah, the broth is definitely the hard part on the miso ramen. I may have to start that like the day before by myself. Yeah, just don't walk away from the vet. Don't walk away from the broiler. Period is usually the general rule. If you're broiling something, stand next to it. Because if you don't, you're gonna have a bad time. Yes, I have primal tempest. Yep, grilling bell peppers is a good way to go because you're guaranteed to get your char in them for sure. Mm mm mm. I'm smelling like garlic now. My parents are extremely supportive, Tay Tay. Um, very lucky to have the family that I do. They've always encouraged me to chase my dreams, which is why I'm doing this right now. Garlic is a magic food. Mmm, so good. I like venison, period. It's really good. So gamey. Uh, I have my knives posted uh, in my equipment list. I use Global brand knives. I've always been very happy with them. I've been using uh, I've been using Global since since culinary school. They're very. Let's see if I can do this. Nope. They're very well balanced, which is great. Well balanced, light, not too heavy, solid, stainless, ice tempered steel. Uh, Global's hold their edge for a very long time. I do recommend they're nice. Um, not too expensive knife. They're about $80 a knife or so, but you only need one good knife in your kitchen. You name it, I'd probably cook with it, Primal. Yep, the G16 is a great knife. You really only need one good chef knife. You can do almost everything uh, with a large chef knife. Ouch, TMT. Yeah, I get mine sharpened maybe once every uh, year or so, like actually freshly sharpened, and then I keep up the honing of the blade and whatnot. I give it mini sharpenings when it needs it, but they keep their edge for a very long time if you take care of them. I.e. never running them through the dishwasher and um, using a steel and whatnot. Yeah, there's tons of sorts of knife. They have like vegetable knives, which is nice to have. Pairing knife is a good thing to have as well. But at the end of the day, if you're just getting started, one good chef knife is really all you need. I think lemon juice is the worst in cuts. That's definitely the worst. Salt's a close second. Oh, the bubbly goodness. The mushrooms are definitely going to take a peek here. They're getting there. Look at all that steam. So much steam. That nice airtight oven. Thank God that's not smoke or I'd be, uh, be in trouble. That was a hundred percent steam. There is no smoke, or we'd be we'd be having a bad time. <laughs> We're saying a gaping moon, more sharp objects. That's definitely definitely fair. Okay, our mushrooms are looking uh, pretty wilted. I'm gonna give them just another minute to cook down, 
and then we'll move the veggies up to the top right tray and as soon as I think they're done we'll probably broil the top of them because they're kind of thick they'll probably get cooked before they ever brown oh a nice little tip if you want something to brown if you need something to brown like broccoli and you don't think it's going to you can put a little bit of sugar on it before you roast it just right on the top of the pan and it will increase the caramelization and browning process Oh no, I mistyped it. <laughs> I've cut through many a finger. I think the, the nastiest feeling uh, for cutting yourself is when you cut into your fingernail. I think that is the... I, I shiver every time I think about it because it's just, it's so, it's such a horrible feeling. It's just, it's horrible. It's like nails on a chalkboard times a hundred. I shouldn't have brought that up. I shouldn't have brought that up. I would take I would take getting burned by five hundred degree oil over that uh, any day of the week, any day. Yeah, that's true, Mike. Meat slice. Well, at least the meat slicer is done quickly. There's no. It's just one and done. All right, let's check here. All right, these mushrooms are looking pretty solid. Definitely getting there. Close it back off. I'm probably gonna broil the mushrooms and then move the veggies up. Uh, in about five minutes or so, once I think they're they're cooked enough. Surprisingly enough, can get the oven open with the camera there. I love vegetables too. They're pretty much the best. Do you ever imagine vegetables with googly eyes? Sure. How long did it take you to lose the heat sensors in your fingertips? About two and a half years. But uh, I can actually feel okay in my hands now. It's a little bit dull on the fingertips, but... There was a moment there where I couldn't feel much at all. In fact, I picked up something hot. The way I knew it was hot is because the inside of my hand burnt, not my fingers. Or felt burning. I agree, Mike. If you prepare vegetables correctly and they still have a nice uh, firmness to them and they're roasted and seasoned properly, so good. Yeah, if you burn your fingertips repeatedly, you lose nerve endings in them. And you can't feel as much with your fingertips. It's so true, Basil. Once you have second degree burns on your fingers, you know what's hot and what burns. It's funny watching other people cook and they pick up something and they say, oh, that's too hot. And then you touch your hand to it and you're like, oh, no, it's not even close. Like, you, you, you know the difference between that 20 degrees where it's uncomfortable to hold and actually going to burn you very well. Alright, so what I'm looking for in the mushrooms is a nice golden brown on the garlic, and it's definitely, it's definitely getting there. So we're just going to be patient. Seems like Kermit Frag always goes into horrific kitchen injury stories. Uh, beets take an extremely long time to roast, Fitzgerald. It depends on the size of the beet, but you usually um, rub oil on the beet and then wrap it in foil and then roast it for like an hour, hour and a half. And then peel them. So roasting beets is a whole different bag than this. I have 
man, I've only cut myself once on Coming with Frag. Did it real good on a stew episode long time ago. Did it real good. Oh, it depends, Sig Rosa. Like, we did, um, I did a meat fabrication episode where I cut up a New York strip and uh, tenderloin. I do that every once in a while just to have meat in the freezer. So, if I'm going to put meat in the freezer, I usually buy a whole cut of meat and then cut it up myself and have it available. No, it is not, Hitman. Yeah, we got revenge on the stew, though. We did a stew episode a couple weeks later, and we nailed it, so. All good there. Oh, mushrooms. Taking a little longer than I thought it would, but that's okay. Like I said, it's the nice thing about roasted vegetables. All you have to do is put them in the oven and forget about it. Well, I did a lot of um, charcuterie and bu butchery stuff in culinary school, and then I also worked as a broiler cook for the better part of a year, where we cut all our own meats, so that's where I learned to cut meat. It's very easy to cut meat. People are just very intimidated by it. Uh, even if you mess it up, it's usually cheaper to buy the whole cut and try to do it yourself. Yeah, don't take a nap. But you can do this while you're waiting on something else, which is always nice. I do have a meat fabrication episode up on YouTube, which is very good for New York's and Tenderloin. It's amazing how much money you save uh, cutting your own meat. You can find all the Cooking with Frag episodes on YouTube. They are all in Playlist, Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, and the old Cooking with Frag videos where I was not doing seasons. So there's probably 20, 25 up there right now. Hello, Contractor. This is the easiest Cooking with Frag ever, but I wanted to talk about roasting vegetables specifically because it's a great... Uh, not only is it a great side, it's a great snack, it's a great technique to use. You can roast just about anything and make it taste delicious. Yeah, I know. I know speaking of bubbles. I'm gonna take a fork real quick and we're gonna poke the we're gonna poke the bottom set of vegetables to see where they're at. Yeah, the They're getting there. Probably actually pretty close, so they're starting to sizzle now because most of the water's cooked off. So they'll start browning soon enough. Uh, I think I'm going to sit them under the broiler in about two minutes, and then we'll call them good. So good. Maybe a little more salt would have been nice, but can always fix that later. Oh, there it is. Hit me right at the end. Because <laughs> that's the only day I get food. Sure, I don't cook for you every day at all. All right, I'm going to move my cutting board so I can actually put the uh, sheet pan down on the counter. I think the mushrooms are nice. They're really got a nice brown on them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Actually, I'm going to throw those under the broiler real quick after the veggies, but I want to get the veggies in there. Okay. Now we're going to put on our broiler. Really? Okay. Uh, broil. 550. That sounds good. Never leave things under the broiler unattended. Number one rule for broiling. Never. Never leave things unattended on a broiler. You will burn them. A broiler is a very hot heating element on the top. So it's pushing massive amounts of heat from the top. So you leave your oven door open 
and then just rotate the vegetables th to finish the browning process. Yep, set plan with one extra meal is a very good policy, Basil. Oh yes, brown. So good. So it says the broiler is 550 degrees. Heating element isn't quite heated up yet. I'm actually going to close the door real quick, or mostly close it. There it goes. Loving it till it bursts into flame. That's one way to look at burning. I've definitely forgotten a few things in the uh, a few things in the oven. A few things in the oven before. Many a Parmesan crisp and toasted pine nuts are one that always get burnt. Keep on broiling. Right on, Fitz Jimmer. We getting there? Oh yeah, we're getting there. Just takes a second to heat up. This oven, for some reason, takes a longer time to heat up than other ones we've had. Roasted walnuts are nice. Well, the nice thing about cooking for yourself, if you do have a meal plan, even if you have, like, okay, you're going to say you're going to make tacos, there's so many different ways you can make tacos. You can make fish tacos, chicken tacos, all sorts of different seasonings and sides and so on and so forth. So saying you're going to eat tacos every week is not that boring as long as you don't make them the same every time. Well, I bet you can make it better next time, alternate. The nice thing about cooking, too, is that if you mess something up, you can always cook it better the next time. Always, always, always. All right, you son of a biscuit. We're getting there, but not quite the browning I want. Move this up. Get it right under that heating element. I did press start, thanks. That cough. All right, so we should be done here in the next uh, five minutes or so, and then we'll have some nice, awesome, nice roasted vegetables for my stream meal. Be playing Infinity Wars tonight, going to do 100% viewer matches, and then uh, we'll do Sub Choice Sunday and resume normal format next week. You'll get there, Master of Doomies. You'll get there. I'm going to taste one of these mushrooms. Oh, Reed, I've been playing quite a few different of the factions. I'll probably make a new deck tonight to play with. Yeah, I might make a sleeper deck tonight to try. Celery Act or Celery Root, uh, really good stuff. That's actually a very good roasted vegetable. I'd say, for the most part, most root vegetables end up being very good, uh, very good for roasting. I am not a fan of this broiler. It's not that. It's not as hot as my previous one. I've actually never used the broiler on this oven. Asparagus is great. If you overcook it, it's one of the worst vegetables ever. There we go. All right, then. Broiler. I don't know.
know why this oven takes much longer to heat up than other ovens, but it does. Like, I can just now see that the element's red and it's been like five minutes. Well, the nice thing about uh, Infinity War is even if you're not uh, good or you're still trying to learn how to build decks and stuff like that, the games are over fairly quickly. I like celery rack and potatoes mixed to get together, um, Basil. Hey, Jax Hex. Well, note to self on my broiler. Be patient. I'm smelling a little, a little burning. There we go. Now we're smoking. That should work out just nicely. Just another second, and then we'll top off the mushrooms, get the garlic browned off, and uh, them seared up a little bit. Coffee with a splash of cream. That's it. All right, so the broiler just needs time to heat up, apparently. That's cool. All right, there we go. Could have got slightly better color on them, but you can see the nice browning on the onions and the broccoli. That's exactly what you're looking for. Just going to finish those off. And we have nice roasted vegetables. That's probably enough for like three days or so for me, for just having snacks and stuff. You want to get a little bit of browning on like the the onions and the garlic and all that stuff. Um, yeah, could have got a little better color, but that's okay. If my broiler would have heated up as fast as my previous broiler, we would have got there. Try to keep um, cooking with frag to about an hour at most. They've been about a half hour, but uh hour's about my limit. Feel the sizzle. Good night, shapeless goose. Needs more protein. Eh. Uh, cable car, I'll probably keep, uh, probably the culinary adventures will probably be about an hour each, would be my guess. Depends on what I'm making, though. No, I can't guarantee or anything like that. All right, mushrooms. Do me a solid. Hello, Panzer at the Coil. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. That actually a really good cooking frag. It was nice to talk to you guys. The past episodes, I haven't really had much time to talk to you in between. Doing awesome, Panzer. It's so going to be playing Infinity Wars for the last night for at least this week, and then Sub Choice Sunday tomorrow. Um, so, uh, what I do know is Super Brother Sword and Sorcery is going to be next Friday for Indie Game Showcase, and we're going to mix in some other stuff uh, in between. Yeah, bok choy is a little bit uh, interesting to roast because it has extremely high moisture content, so you have to be careful what you roast it with. Like, you wouldn't want to roast it with broccoli or something else because it would uh, be mush by the time it's done. So good. Okay. We're going to call that good right there. They're nice and dry, which is awesome. Alrighty, so we have nice roasted mushrooms. Little Chantel, you see how much those cook down. These are going to be my special treat tonight. And some nice roasted broccoli, broccoli rob, carrots, onions, garlic, and herbs. Really simple side to do. As you can see, it took about a half hour or so, so you can just throw that in there and while you're getting the rest of your meal ready. So good. Honestly, this right here is the perfect snack for me. 